Hey everybody, Isocat here. And today we're going to be talking about visual aids. Things like grenade and fire indicators, bullet trails, kill cams, outline silhouettes, and more. Some people love them and think the more information they have, the better. Others prefer a minimalist and realistic combat system that does away with all the on-screen aids. But which way is better? Who's right? Let's go in-depth with visual aids in Rainbow Six Siege and find out. <laughs> First, let's start by defining what visual aids are. This is on-screen info that tells the player what's happening around them by providing additional information that goes beyond what you can just see with your eyes when unaided. This includes things like the white teammate outlines that allow you to see through walls. Incoming fire and grenade indicators show you a directional arrow for incoming fire and hits so you know where you're being shot from or where a grenade landed. Bullet trails also show the direction of incoming fire but in a more overt way. They allow you to see shots from a further distance away so you can see where teammates are being suppressed from. Kill cams are a way of showing the player who shot them and from where. And while post-mortem, they can relay that information to the rest of the team. Other, lesser elements also fall into this category. Kill markers, revive markers to show a downed teammate in need of help, health bars under other players' icons on the HUD, and more. The developers have stated they feel this information is necessary to give the players feedback on their environment, and that the majority of players are okay with these mechanics being in place as they find it useful. Then there's the other side of the coin. Many in the subreddit and forum community have said they don't like this. It's a crutch, a form of hand-holding to dumb the game down for mass appeal. Another complaint is that it's magical knowledge that the player wouldn't have otherwise been aware of. I mean, how do you know where the guy was if he shot you in the back? Why should you be able to pass that information along to your surviving team? How would you know if a grenade landed three feet behind you if you didn't actually see it? So, who's right? Well, clearly it depends on who you ask. But the real answer might be both sides. Let me explain. There are valid points of consideration in both of these arguments. Neither is really right or wrong. They are, however, very different. Hardcore players arguing for a more realistic and minimalist experience in terms of visual aids are absolutely correct. These are crutches that are designed to make things easier. They also impart an unfair level of knowledge to the player. Sneak attacks become meaningless. What good does it do to get the drop on a guy with a solid ambush? If he could just relay that info to the rest of his team because a dead guy gave it away. Seeing through walls is like magic x-ray vision. How would you know your teammate just went down the stairs if he didn't tell you that over the headset? Bullet trails flying through the air is like watching the Matrix and allowing you to know things with precognition. If the guy in front of you just got dropped by bullet trails coming from the left, now you know which direction to flank in. Grenade kills become more accidental luck than anything else because when you throw them, the player gets a great big icon warning him of where it is, giving him plenty of time to get away from it. You get the point. Now, before people get all upset that the realistic players need to stop wanting a simulator, hear me out. Nobody's saying this game has to be Arma, but neither is it Halo. The cool thing about Rainbow Six games were that they always kind of occupied that middle space in between these types of games. Casual players get frustrated when they die and they don't know how or why. That guy that just made a murder hole in the wall and drops the whole team? He wouldn't have been able to do that if his bullet trails were visible and at least gave the players an idea of what direction to shoot back in. A casual player that gets blown up time and again by grenades they never saw or never knew about is going to get frustrated and might stop playing the game. The counter-argument to this is communication. If you're always talking as a team, if you're calling out what you're doing, a lot of these problems aren't going to matter. But let's be honest here. If you're the only person talking, coordination goes right out the window and these aides fill in the gap. If you play with a regular group of the same players like I do, you might not have that issue. But if you hop on by yourself and try to find games with random people, you're going to get random results of teamwork. Most people aren't super tactical when they talk online, if they even bother talking at all, which is quite common. These are real live human beings and may do unpredictable things and fail to communicate. When the game depends so heavily on teamwork, there needs to be a way to deal with these gaps that depend on the reactions of people that you can't control. Yeah, real SWAT teams don't have x-ray vision or grenade indicators when they storm a house, that's true. But real SWAT teams are also not composed of five random people, half of which may not even be adults, and most of whom have never worked together before, or might not even understand basic combat tactics. So there does need to be some kind of stopgap. And that's why both sides are right. Hopefully, the answer is that Ubisoft will implement a hardcore mode and a casual mode to satisfy both groups. The concerns of both groups are equally important, but in different ways and for different reasons. The only real issue here is that matchmaking will be fragmented between the two groups, but there's no other way I can see to satisfy both of their concerns. The only other solution would be to take half the aids out, but you'll probably just fail to satisfy either group in that situation. These should be true and dedicated hardcore settings. 
not just limited to a certain difficulty level or a certain game type or a per player setting. There's no point in turning off visual aids for yourself if everyone else can still use them against you in the same match. Players that want to play the game this way shouldn't only be able to choose it in realistic terrorist hunt, but not in regular terrorist hunt. It should also not be limited to only PvP or only PvE. Each group wants this to be the way the game is played for them regardless of game type or difficulty setting. The developers have confirmed they're indeed thinking about these issues, and to their credit, they've already resolved many issues based on player feedback, like removing hit markers, reducing the intensity of the player outlines, and more. But a true hardcore mode needs more than that. Do you like the visual aids as is, or do you want to lobby for a dedicated hardcore mode to be added? Join the discussion, head on over to the forums and subreddit and let us know what you think, or comment below. Please like and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest in-depth topics. We'll catch you next time.